in growth by weight. Um, and we're replicating and we're and the next line of these prototypes are coming out. We, we know the physics pretty well. The molecule is becoming stable as a monomolecule, increased solubility. And so we're also measuring the effect on combustion efficiency. We still have the action that's going to that from. Yes. Um, this, this device is using, um, the, yes, this, it, it's synthetic material, it's man-made material, and plastic here, and this was copper, uh, we've experienced, we've been experimenting with various materials here, we've used plastics in the outer ring as well, um, we're depending here upon a hydrodynamic conjugation and a magnetic conjugation, so the capacitive effect should be minor here. But we have, we're not sure of that yet. If I was building a dielectric device, I'd have to be a lot more careful about the material. Mm -hmm. And we want to combine the dielectric effect with it. But this is just examples of what can be done when you begin to understand the principle. <laughs> yeah, actually, <laughs> yes. Ideally, you got it right. This cone here should be made of a phase conjugate dielectric ceramic with the trace mineral material, et cetera, et cetera, just like that egg you're passing around was made of the trace mineral ceramic, and that contributes to the dielectric effect. That's right. Not optimally fractal, yes. And a thin film coating of palladium or gold wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> and we actually designed one of these for that purpose. We have a copper coat on it already. Because you have to coat with copper before you coat with gold. Anyway, yes, yes. Attracting more light in a relationship. Fractal versus fractionating, perhaps. But, I mean, for example, we have a paper we wrote for the Conference of Mayors of Australia, goldenmean.info slash light city, which is how to reinvent your city to attract light, energy, tourists, and money. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's, it's very simple. If your city's magnetic field looks like a rose, you're creating growth force at the center, and everybody there has bliss, and you make lots of money. And you attract rain. The same physics that allows water vapor to become a droplet. <laughs> yes, it, it, sort of introduction to Tantra 101, right? No, it, it, that, but that's the idea that biologic plasma will always gather where distribution perfection is possible. So the plasma itself is smart. That's why if people keep building metal buildings, we all die. Because we're gathering in situations where plasma can't survive. The elemental die and we die. Mm -hmm. and so we're going to say a lot more about that. The question is about rain. rain. Does it rain more in pod? And the, the idea here is that, the idea here is that um, uh, if you study desertification and patriarchy, since we're having that kind of conversation, um, what research has shown is, first, we know that if you, if you go to hard patriarchal cultures, um, uh, that the, the, the churches and temples are made of non-paramagnetic material, like sandstone. Where you go to matriarchy, and the temples are made of paramagnetic material, like limestone. And the difference is fractionation versus fractality. Now this is what, of course, Professor Phil Callahan taught, 
but it's also the subject of a very famous paper, which I'm trying to find here, called Desertification and Patriarchy. Now, since we seem to have attracted a bit of rain, um, this, the science here says that anthropologically you can prove that when people pass laws that make touch illegal, it causes desert. So PhD research confirms that laws that make touch illegal cause deserts to happen. So, for example, hard Arabic cultures where touch is illegal, you can prove, just by studying the spread of the Sahara Desert, you can rather prove that that was a cause of the spread of the desert. So we're asking the question as electrical engineers, why do laws that prevent humans from touching, and having bliss, I suppose, but we touch them, cause deserts to happen? Well, the physics appears to be that the way water vapor becomes a droplet is that the molecules, when they get into an electric field that's centripetal, they learn to share. And so the way water vapor molecules become a droplet is somebody teaches them how to touch. <laughs> Who teaches the water vapor molecules how to touch? A centripetal electric field. Example, you take these collumating pipes and you put it in a real live river and you point them at a cloud and it's a phase constant capacitor and you put a hole in the cloud. Very elementary. But even more fun is you have some really healthy twinkling eyed kids and they're rather barefoot in the mud and you tell them to focus on a cloud and they pick one they like and they will focus there and they can almost any child can put a hole in the cloud. Now the electrical engineering of how that works is really very simple. It's the same reason Bill Killer measured focused human attention compresses electric field. So there's the water vapor molecules in that cloud experiencing a centripetal electric force. What happens? The water vapor molecules precipitate, precipitously. Precipitation in physics and magic is the same meaning. Right? So the water vapor molecules in the, in the environment of a centripetal electric field become droplets. Otherwise, they never touch. And so that is an introduction to this physics here, that in cultures where touch is prevented, so, you know, if you ever saw kids dancing barefoot in the mud and having lots of bliss, the clouds tend to come over their life. Because <laughs> there's a centripetal electric force. Does that make sense to you? The physics of orgone, the physics of precipitation, is about inviting compression, which is about fractality. You see how this fits together? So rainmaking from Kundalini is not a mystery to you, is it? So big storms that form around big rituals, you get the flavor. Biologic plasma is there. And then if we grow up, we can realize why stars made DNA, because they need something that we make. Think, centripetal force. So stars are waiting for the centripetal force of gene pools, and stars like the sun about to have her orgasm are badly in need of centripetal force. The only thing that calmed the solar wind so far was a million children singing. Any ideas of what we should be doing? <laughs> You <laughs> should be a piezo electric. Yes, so this is sort of an introduction 101 to uh, how to follow your bliss, which is, yes. Very good, thank you, David. Right on. In fact, this, uh, David makes a very good point. So this kind of work actually causes the water veins to come to the surface, literally. They say the churches, you know, they call it the, the uh, cistercians, because they were built over the cistern, but a properly built cathedral can make its own cistern because the water will come there. You know, build it and she will come. So actually, and they also proved conversely that at Vukovar in Yugoslavia, war causes the underground water to go away. You can measure it. It's provable. The reason the underground water leaves during war is because the centripetal force is gone. And the women went to Vukovar in Yugoslavia and did a feather labyrinth ritual, and the water came back, and they measured it. Marty Kane, MartyKane.com, Boston. This is real. Years ago, we had mysterious trout around here. 